hello and welcome to the course on dealing with materials data. Today we are going to start a very important and a fresh subject called regression analysis. Regression analysis plays an important role in uh, data analysis where you have two sets of data one is a response value while the others are the uh, independent values. And the most common analysis that is being used or it should be used to begin with is a regression analysis. And uh, now we will go through this sessions on uh, various aspects of regression analysis. So, the outline is for this particular session is going to be first we will define what is regression. Uh, there are two kinds multiple regression versus simple regression. We will talk about the random error and the regression coefficients, the least squares estimates of regression coefficients, the expected value of uh, least squares estimates of uh, regression coefficient its variance the estimate of uh, variance for random error and uh, we will at the end will give a slide on most commonly used notation. Uh, this slide will be useful in future for reference. <coughs> okay, so, let us start. As I said suppose we have a response variable y and some independent variable x1, x2, xr and you know that there is some relationship between y and x1, x2, xr or you at least suspect that there might be a relationship between y and x1, x2, x3, xr. The simplest, simplest relationship that can exist between them is a linear relationship which can be expressed as y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus and so on and so forth beta r xr plus epsilon. Uh, this epsilon is a very important point. In the reality when we get the data, we cannot be always sure that the relationship will be exact like this. If you do not consider epsilon this relationship is a mathematical relationship. When you add an epsilon quantity which is called a random error, epsilon expresses represents a random error in this relationship, this is where the relationship becomes random or statistical in nature. Now, if r is equal to 1, this relationship is called a simple linear regression. When r is equal to 1, the relationship y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon is called a simple linear regression. In general with r independent variables, it is called multiple regression. And the notation wise, beta 1, beta 0, beta 0, beta 1, beta r are called regression coefficients and they are generally unknown, they need to be estimated from the data. So, <coughs> then you have a random error. Generally it is assumed that the random uh, error has an expected value of 0. There is a random error epsilon which has a expected value 0. What it means is that on the average y actually equals to this value on the average. But otherwise there is a plus or minus error in it. This plus or minus error is represented by epsilon and that we can say that it is plus or minus average is by saying that its expected value is 0. So, in other words if you recall our uh, previous sessions 
we can say that expected value of y given x1, x2, x3, xr is actually beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus 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 beta r xr because the expected value of epsilon is 0 there is no epsilon here. So, the regression coefficients beta 1, beta, beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 and xr need to be estimated given the values of x1, x2, x3, xr. It means that the independent variable will be a given fixed random va fixed values for us not a random variable in this particular case and y is going to be random variable because of the randomness of epsilon. First we will discuss in detail the estimation procedure for beta 0, beta 1 and sigma square which is a variance of epsilon variance of error through the case of simple regression that is y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus epsilon assuming that expected value of epsilon is 0 and variance of epsilon is sigma square. What estimation we could have done? The most commonly used estimator is called least squares estimator. What are we really trying to do? Let us take the case. This is x and this is y axis. Suppose we have a few data points which go like this. and you have to fit a line through it. You have already done this exercise in algebra and this line we fit in such a way that the distance between the actual line, the line and the actual value is minimized. This is called least square estimator. So, we would like to find estimate b1, beta 0 and b1, beta 1 in this relationship in such a way that beta 0 and beta, beta 1 minimizes the estimate of beta 1 and beta 0 and beta 1 minimize the squared error value between y and its estimator. Okay. So, let us denote the estimator to differentiate between the actual values beta 0 and beta 1 and its estimator we call the estimators a and b. So, what we are trying to do is we want to minimize the sums of squares of y i minus a minus b x i whole square. I guess you already know why do we take a square because if we do not take a square the sum of the, the uh, distances that you calculate that is without the square if you take y i minus a minus b x i the best is when it becomes 0 if you take a mean value. So, the idea is that we square the distance so that we remove the sign of the difference between y and a plus b x i and then we take a square of it and now we try to find a and b which would minimize which would minimize the sums of squares ss ss call is called ss because it is sum of squares it is a sum of squares so the easiest way of doing it is by taking a partial differentia differential uh, partial differentiation with respect to a. So, here we are uh, ok. So, we take uh, delta s s by delta a which will be given by minus 2 summation y i minus a minus b x i you equate it to 0. Similarly, you take delta s s by delta b 
and you equate it to 0. And this is a very simple simplification you will come to know that when you do this little algebra A turns out to be y bar minus b x bar and b turns out to be which looks a little bit complicated but as we go on you will recognize this term. It is summation of x i y i minus n x bar y bar divided by summation of x i square minus n x bar square. If you look at it very carefully this comes very close to correlation coefficient. Uh, but how to derive it I leave it to you. I think it is a good exercise to simplify this to get to this equation. Now we come to what is the distribution of A and B. Remember that now your yi is a this whole thing is estimated using the value sorry uh, let us start the pen. This whole thing is estimated using value y i and y bar. Remember that x i and x bar are given values. So, they are not random variables. It is the y i which is a random variable and therefore, a and b now are random variable and we must know what is distribution like as we had done in the past while working out the estimation theory and the hypothesis testing we need to know the distribution of this random quantity which we are going to use as an estimator. So, how to find a distribution of A and B? First we make an assumption on the distribution of y. Remember that y is defined as beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon. So far our assumptions were only that expected value of epsilon is 0 and a variance of epsilon is sigma square. Remember just to remind you that this sigma square does not depend on the data value i. Okay. So, this is the relationship with respect to i is equal to 1 to n, but this sigma square is not dependent on i. Okay. So, in this relationship now only we are adding an assumption, there is no distributional assumption made so far. no distribution assumed for epsilon only so far ok. So far we have not made any assumption that is being made now. Now we are saying that suppose epsilon is distributed as a normal distribution with mean value 0 and the variance common variance sigma square for all i is equal to 1, 2, 3 etcetera n. Why this is a normal because it is very common to and it is very well known fact that by and large the errors are distributed as normal distribution. It is a very old story that uh, it was the Galileo who made so many observations of stars and when he found that every time when he makes an observation there is a minute error and that error after 200 years it was Gauss who found that this error behaves in a very perfect bell shaped curve and it was called a Gaussian distribution and therefore it has become a normal distribution. But that is a side story. So, any error to be assumed as a normal distribution is a natural process. So, here we assume it as a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square. And therefore, it implies that our y i for i is equal to 1, 2, 
up to n is also distributed as a normal distribution with a mean mean beta 0 plus beta 1 xi and a variance of sigma square. And now we can find an estimated value of b because b you please recall the previous slide the estimator of a involves b therefore for first we must try to find the expected value of b and use it in the estimation expected value of a. And therefore, we come here and we find that expected value of b can be found by you remember that these are all the constant values given values to us. Therefore, it is only the y i which is a random variable. Therefore, this becomes this now if you replace y i by beta 0 plus beta 1 x i it will reduce down to the same thing. Uh, shall we do it here? Let us quickly do it. Mm, okay, I have to move to pen. I do that. Now we say that this quantity we simplify it here. So it becomes summation of x i minus x bar. Expected value of y i is beta zero plus beta 1 x i divided by summation of x i square minus n x bar whole square. So, if you simplify it you will find that it comes to summation x i beta 0 minus x bar beta 0 plus as we said it will be beta 1 x i square minus beta 1 x i sorry x i times x bar divided by the quantity is constant which is summation x i square minus n x bar square. And this you will find will simplify to summation x i minus x bar whole square times beta 1 divided by summation of x i square minus n x bar square. This you can see by simply bringing the summation this is also beta 0 n x bar and here when you bring the summation this also becomes n x bar. So, this quantity cancels and this quantity brings out the beta 1 and the x i square minus summation x bar square. So, it will bring you n x bar square and therefore, this will become beta 1. But this is the quantity in which you have to realize. So, we have the this quantity will cancel out and this quantity results into this value and therefore it is beta 1. And once you put this into it this is very simple because this basically gives you the uh, expected value of y bar which is nothing but beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 bar and then you will again make minus beta 1 x bar and therefore this will become beta 0. So, this is how the distribution in the distribution of a and b we find that expected value of a. So, expected value of b is beta 1 and expected value of a is beta 0. Just go back and think a little bit because epsilon is assumed to be normal with 0 mean and variance sigma square, yi becomes normal with the expected value of beta 0 plus beta 1 xi and variance sigma square. And you can see that the b value, the estimate value of b 
is also a function of y with certain constant and estimated uh, or the uh, as, uh, the expected or the estimate of beta 0 a is also a function of y only rest of it is a constant you will find that these two are also distributed that is a and b random variables are also distributed as normal. So, all we need to know is its expected value and its variance. So, in the next case we will go we are going to find out the variance of b and variance of a. So, the variance of a and b again you have to follow the same formula. Variance of a and b is a variance of summation i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar y i divided by summation of x i square minus n x bar whole square everything square because when you do the variance the constant is squared. What <coughs> formula we have used here if you recall is that if a variance of a random variable x is sigma square then variance of random variable a x is a square sigma square. So, this formula is being used here therefore, the denominator which is only a multiplier remember x i is a given value. So, it is a constant value we understand it is not a random variable. So, it only sits <coughs> comes out as a squared of it 1 divided by that as a square of it and then you have to take the variance of y i with its multiplier and therefore, that is also going to be and another formula if you know that variance of x is sigma 1 square and variance of y is sigma 2 square then and x and y are independent or to be very clear not correlated. In that case variance of x plus y is variance of x plus variance of y. So, using that formula we can simplify this by stating that this is equal to summation of x i minus x bar whole square this part comes out because of this and then you have a variance of y i. And you know that variance of y i this part is equal to sigma square. So, when you simplify it <coughs> it comes to sigma square divided by s x x and this is a notation we would like to introduce here. Sigma x x is equal to summation of x i square minus or it is the same as summation of x i minus x bar whole square i runs from 1 to n. This is a new notation we are including here and therefore, this becomes the <coughs> variance. The variance of A can also be derived in a similar way and uh, the variance of A can be found to be the same thing. Please note that this can also be written as sigma square summation x i square divided by n s x x. <coughs> sum of squares of residuals. Now, one thing is important is we have there are actually three unknown parameters. There are three unknown parameters beta 0, 
beta 1 and sigma square. We estimated this by A, we estimated this by B, what about this? This is the question we want to answer and that we are going to do that if y i is an observed value and a plus b x i is an estimated value, then we define residual r i as y i minus a minus b x i, then sum of square of residual is defined as summation of r i square. And you can make out that y is a normal random variable. If you take a plus b x i, this is also a normal random variable. Therefore, the difference should also fall a normal random variable with a mean 0. And therefore, summation of r i square will follow a chi square distribution. And the degrees of freedom will be n minus 2 because we had n data points. We had n data points and we have already estimated beta 0 and beta 1, two parameters estimated. Therefore, degrees of freedom comes to n minus 2. So, this follows chi square n minus 2 and then the expected value of sums of squares of residual divided by n minus 2 is sigma square. <coughs> Finally, we introduce some of the notations here. S x y is summation of x i minus x bar multiplied by y i minus y bar. Similarly, if I say S x x, it is means that it is summation of x i minus x bar whole square and S y y is a summation of y i minus y bar whole square. And in that case, B that is the estimate of beta 1 is S x y divided by S x x. Please see that this is only a comma and not a dash. A is estimated as y bar minus b x bar and s s r that is sums of squares of residual is estimated as s x x times s y y minus s x y whole square divided by s x x. The distribution of least squares parameter under the assumption that the errors are distributed as normal with sigma square then the estimate of beta 0 which is A is a normally distributed with a expected value beta 0 and the variance as sigma square multiplied by summation x i square divided by n s x x. The estimate of beta 1 is distributed as normal with expected value beta 1 and the variance of sigma square divided by s x x. And sums of squares of residual divided by sigma square is distributed as chi square with n minus 2 degrees of freedom and therefore you can write that <coughs> SSR sums of squares of residual divided by n minus 1 I'm sorry n minus 2 its expected value is equal to sigma square. These are the two tables worth remembering and worth understanding. This is the crux of today's lecture. So, in summary, we define the concept of regression. In the case of simple regression equation, we estimated the regression coefficients through least squares estimate, arrived at their expected value and variance, estimated the error variance introduced commonly used notation for least squares estimate of regression coefficient and their distribution. <coughs>